to the Wolves Den podcast. I'm Tim. I'm Dan. Today we've got a little uh, test, should we say, Daniel? Yeah, 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 basically. We've got uh, a valve amp, we've got solid state tab, and we've got a modeler or head rush. And we are seeing if there's a noticeable, di noticeable difference. In a lot of speculation goes out that valve is the only way whereas but as we see now with the way technology has advanced got the camper modelers and things like that there's a lot of professionals using them now and i think we should give it a test to see if we can tell the difference if it's a good difference bad difference between all three mm -hmm. so, so it's, it, but it's more for in the room we haven't mic these ups or anything we haven't we're not putting them through anything it's just basically for us to see in the room and we thought we'd invite you guys along because it's fun to test. <laughs> so, so Tim's going to start off. Pick in hand. I'm going to uh, plug into one of these randomly. Ah, it should be far on your hook. Oh, we are blindfolded. This was news to me. Yeah. Well, I'm going to see which one he thinks it is. I'm going to choose one. Tim, make some stupid noises while I choose something. Scap to be for the puppy, be for the love, little, 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 little,
thing. Right to you. Okay then. Pick fingers in your ears. A lot more. Uh, So move back. to set up I thought that them actually being behind me like you know and knowing which one was slightly further away yeah would actually help but it it doesn't no uh, no it really I really actually can't tell the difference um, <laughs> should say we're using the VC30 uh, 30 watt Laney solid state obviously the MG and the head rush which we are using the head rush wedge the 112 and the, obviously the gig board yeah, good sound good sounds all around though really I know it's low volume and stuff and you can you can't really test a tube amp until you've really cranked them up cranked it. but yeah for low level sort of let's say bedroom rehearsing yeah I'd say that's a bedroom volume yeah, yeah, it's all sounding good anyway. Uh, um, no bad sounds anyway, considering that normally buzzes like a bastard. Mm. But that's just wear and tear, sort of, because it's going to be serviced, but as I don't use it. Yeah, it's pretty good. No, surprising pretty result good. there for me. I'm happy with that though, glad I got more right anyway. Right, next we're going to do a sort of metal version for me, I think. Yeah. <laughs> okay, see you in a bit. <laughs> State, uh, valve and modeler. Same answer, the only difference is because Daniel's going for a slightly different sound, it's going to be 
a metal tone. So we've switched out the overdrive pedal for a on the on it just gives it a bit more heat. Yeah. So uh, a bit more girth. Yeah, massively. So we'll uh, without further ado, we will crack on. Hey, you didn't tell me you could see through this. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Uh, hey, you do have your eyes closed, don't you, when you work? <laughs> <laughs> it's just automatically. Just, just naturally, yes. Right, just move that guitar out of the way. Must note as well, exactly the same guitars Daniel's using his EC1000. Um, same pickups, just mine often got covered on. So, things in your ears, please, Danielson. La 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 fucking la 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 So we're actually asking a lot of that fucking amplifier <laughs> to to be metal, but um, yeah, I, I, I think that's the valve. I can just recognise the sound the sound from behind. It's it's, it's a lot more mid range and high highs. I Excellent. Think. Okay. Right. If you'd like to uh, cue the lift music. <laughs> Second one was the head rush. Indeed. Last one was the Marshall, and the first one was the valve. Congratulations, Daniel! Three out of three. Way! Fucking awesome. It is a 
It's a test worth doing though, I think, personally, because... If you've got the amps and stuff. <laughs> yeah, because just to know the difference, I think, is... Yeah. And know what, diff we'll know what you're getting from amps. Like with the, with the Marshall there, that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good, solid beginner's rock amp. And that's cranked up to 10 on the gain. So yeah. that, you know, you're not getting much more drive than that. No. No, you don't need and much more drive than that, to be honest. It's, I mean... It's, 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 I think, you know, crank it up a bit louder, you're probably going to get that bit of natural saturation in, the, yeah. in it within the amp anyway. Definitely. So that's going to make you feel like you're getting a bit more. It's, I think it's a, it's a good sounding amp, you know, for, for a budget amp, mm. for a beginner that's just starting out, it's a, it's a great bit, a great little bit of kit. There's an outrun with solid state amps and the Boss Katana as well, I mean, that's fucking amazing. A lot um, of people are using them now because they're practical, practical though, aren't they? They're getting yeah. all the sound shit they want out of them and they're very practical, which is one of our main reasons behind Headrush, it's just so easy to carry out. Yeah, it's, isn't the best looking thing in the world because you don't really want to, you know, if, ten years ago if you rocked up to I a mean, gig, it's just a PA speaker basically, and a fucking foot foot pedal. It's just got a full range flat response speaker in it, so the sound that that produces is what you will get out of the head rush. And the, just the volumes of, of such Definitely. such a small bit Definitely. of kit is unreal. Like it's it, it can compete with most PA systems on your small, especially your small to medium sized venues. It just cranks out 2,000 watts. The RMS, I'm not, not sure, but it's it's a great bit of great bit of kit anyway. And, it's, and as for the certainly lady, for stage volume, you, oh yeah, yeah, you, yeah you're fucking laughing with practicality that. on tour with that. To say that yeah. you've got you can get two guitar amps on one seat in the back of the car, <laughs> you're yeah. laughing, aren't you? Um, as for the lady, it's I think that's good for what it does. It's that I would say that's what it is good at. It does very well. Yeah, it's a clean blues amp. To do metal, you're asking a lot of it. Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's got your long tubes in and all yeah, sorts of that. It's <laughs> I mean, but what it does, it's clean amp, it's a blues amp, it, it can do probably light rock and stuff like that. Yeah, classic rock, I think you'd get away with. Yeah, with the right pedals to push it, I think you'd get away with quite a bit on that. It's a, you know, the great little amp, and for 30 watts, you know, I know tubes are loud, the tube amps are naturally louder for the wattage yeah, anyway, yeah. but you're absolutely definitely they are cranked up and that's I mean, just the one by 12 we've got the two by 12 over there and that is just ear piercingly loud for a small that's on like one isn't it uh clean volume it's, it's, it's on, the drive's on 10 the drive and the drive volume is on one yeah yeah the drive on volume's on one yeah, that's so probably on like the five pedal's doing a little bit so, but that's what's pushing it to get the yeah, extra gain that's on like five or six probably halfway even and head rush well that's on about three <laughs> 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 Well, that goes up to 11, yeah. which is a it's always a good little <laughs> gimmick they've got. But um, outside of, I think uh, practice-wise, I think it's, it's ta you're only really going to notice on recording. If you're recording, that's when you'll notice the difference between these amps. Because by the time you've got the dynamics of a full band with them all, then you're really going to tell the difference. You know, it's... I think anybody's going to be hard pushed to tell the difference if you're in a band. And yeah, band practice. Audience you know. is never going to know. <laughs> it's not, yeah, it's, I think as a solo, you know, if you're a solo artist, just yeah. man, guitar, and amp, then you perhaps would. But against the backing of a drum kit, bass is rumbling, mm -hmm. vocals are blaring out as well. It's got a live crowd out there screaming. Nobody's going to know. Yeah, I think you're going to struggle to tell the difference. Personally, I'm, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have all three, but mm. it's. That served me very well for, I think I got that in 2010, I think I got that when I was in the army. So that's that's a great bit of kit. And if, if I needed a quick solid state, state amp to take somewhere, I'd probably I'd either grab that one with Fender Champ. Two very basic amps and it's for just two that are on the shelf that we lend out here for rehearsals. Yeah. Um, if I'm doing a small pub gig, covers, I've never actually gigged it, so I'd probably be tempted to take, give that a whirl. You know, put a little yeah. depending on what sort of sounds I'm after in the set I'm doing, but I'd be tempted to take that out. That's the personally nice for me. I'd just take the head rush because it's yeah. At the same time, I'd like to show future gear off, so I'd probably take the head rush, which is why we we use head rush in the band. Yeah, and mm -hmm. we've both got the same setup, so it's for us. It's I don't know. It, it just makes life easier when it comes to matching sounds. We know how each other's gear work, and we know we can. If I'm writing a little riff at home and I want Dan to do something, he can 
and I've played about what I've got on mine. I can either copy and paste it over to it using computers, or he can just replicate it himself. And yeah. it's and it's so much easier. And we can. And the one the downside about hairbrushes, which I expect a little bit more, is the f how often they release little updates for it. Like it's yeah, they've been, they've been out four years now nearly, and the the, we, the updates that we've had haven't been massive. No. I, I th I'd like to push them and see if we can get any more. Yeah, me too. Yeah, a few more amplifiers and shit. And the good thing about them is, if you're if you've got your single pedal, you can add your pedal into the effects loop and control it from the board anyway. Yeah. So you could have your pedal on top of your amp, a little cable, and you you use that as an effects loop anyway because it's got like an amp board on the back end anyway. So it's I've I've put an auto wire on it just to see what it sounds like before, and it's it sounded absolutely fine. So it's if you've got that unique pedal that you know, you can't get a sound like you can on, only can on your pedal it with a certain single stomp box then yeah. you can throw that in there and still control it from the actual box which is a which is a massive and then you have got the best of both anyway plus and also you could use the headrush with the actual amp as well the amp, amp, yeah the headrush will switch amp channels and everything like that so if you want to just use your channels and just use headrush with the effects you can do that way on a little thing I posted on a local page the other day, they said I, I put on their stomp boxes versus the SPs yeah. and modules, and um, they well, said they said if you the ma the main factor against these modelers and DSPs and things like that was that if it goes down, you've lost everything. But to be fair, I don't think I'd ever go to a gig without some sort of backup anyway yeah and I'd, I'd, I think many other musicians would be the same I think they'd always just have that little I've got loads of little cheap pedals and stuff like yeah, that yeah. it'd be better than not being able to play at all so I think just having that little what's it, uh, yeah that little backup isn't it just even if it's just an overdrive pedal you know and a tuner yeah, you know yeah. it, it's something to keep you going in it and um, uh, that's why I forward my pedals because you never know yeah it's true <laughs> yeah, I've got a poor tone works pedal that if, if shit at the fan at a gig runs off battery so we haven't got to carry extra yeah. power supplies around and you know it's not like you 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 big band you we a big band on the road all the time well, you, you the wouldn't band. be having these issues anyway you'd have a spare head rush to be honest wouldn't you yeah we would if that was if that was the case but you know someone will lend you some batteries someone would probably lend you a tuner you know so it's, no one's just going to be like huh, jack on him he can yeah. fucking suffer <laughs> the amount of times we've been at gigs and something like a cable's gone down. Yeah, like, someone just throws one at you. And we've, we've lent one to people and stuff like that. It's just what happens. But for me personally, I'm just going to stick with the headrush at the moment. I mean, if push came to shove, I'd just use the headrush. If, if I had loads and loads of money, yes, I'd have two massive valve stack amps and stacks and a shitload of pedals in front of me and everything like that. But I don't. And... To be honest, I'm not. I'm, I don't want to carry all that gear either. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's maintaining it though at the same time and looking after it. Like with, I don't know. I, I never, never even thought of. I've never had a multi effects pedal service. No. I've not known. I, I imagine you can get them you know, opened up and cleaned out a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, so some of them have cooling systems in and things like that. So I imagine it's there's a market out there for it. I imagine well, I say market, but I imagine it's somebody's job. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. It does it, but um, I think for the money that you pay, as long as they last, they are worth every single penny. Definitely. Definitely. So down to that. But it's, it's the same with the like, tube amps can be they can be costly, but if you treat them well and clean them, look after them. I don't. But that's that's because this year, well, last twenty twenty has been an absolute right off. Your best bet. Your best bet for actual longevity is a solid state amp. They're going to last ages you're not going to get so. the tones and things like that but no. i've always been one to say though if you're going to use digital pedals well i say digital pedal i suppose overdrive and yeah anything overdrive is fine with a valve amp yeah because that's what pushes it but anything else you change straight away you're changing the tone of the amp so i don't see the point in using any any digital pedals other than the foot switch that comes with a valve amp yeah if you're going to say oh i only use it for a valve amp because if you say, oh, that's a valve amp, and I use a bloody chorus pedal and a super, uh, I don't know, a super distortion pedal, yeah. there's no point whatsoever to, if you're having a valve amp for the sake of it, you may as well save yourself 250 quid and get yourself a two, okay. 300 pound yeah. Fender Champ or something like that. Well, because yeah, you may as well. Because you, you, you're adjusting the sound that much, you, you're losing what the valve amp is 
one point US opponent, they thought they had Valvan four. Yeah. So any sort of digital pedals, you may as well just get a solid state. That's our advice. Yeah. That's my, right, my opinion. Like, that's just my opinion, by the way. Long, longevity. Buy what you want, use what you want, enjoy it. Yeah. You know, valve amps are always going to break down. I mean, right, I remember one one time my valve amp broke down when we were doing a gig on the back of the lorry, and <laughs> rain started pouring down into the back of the valve amp because I had a JCM 900. <laughs> and it, it worked all the way through the gig, which was great for, for, for us, but then afterwards it was just like, just went poof. And I had to get the valves redone, power amp section redone, and that was just a shit. Load but with that one, when you first kick it in, the fans noisy as anything, but it still works. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it, once it gets warmed up, and uh, it's yeah, I think it's. I remember turning it on one day and it making a noise, and I thought, oh, I said, oh dear, my amp's making a noise, and then I just turned it up, and I was like, oh, it still works. Then. Yeah. I think yeah, durability. You can't go wrong with a good old solid state. Yeah, they can be a bit of a morgue to carry around. But that's put 20 years ago. You didn't have stuff like these modelers and things like that. It was no. completely different. But good. I think now you just see them in practice rooms, don't you? Rehearsal spaces and things like that. Yeah. Because they're good, solid bits of kit, and you, it's You'll one less thing for ever. an artist to bring to a practice room. You last forever, though. That's the good thing. Well, it'd, be, it'd be interesting to see if I can get another oh, ten years. Well, I've had ten, yeah, I've <laughs> about ten years. Yeah. So Bet you didn't buy a new either. No, did he? I've got a gum tree for that six quid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's the thing. And I, I'll, always, I'll always buy a bar, you know, because it's, it does serve a purpose from bands have practiced for me. Mm. Yeah, they've used it. And I've never, well, I've never had any complaints there. Really. No. The pots can be a bit noisy, but as long as it's not at a gig. And that hasn't been gigged for six years now. So mm. it's just been up here. It's in the, well, it's not the head here six years, but it's just been a rehearsal amp for, yeah. for a bit of a while. It's good amp. They what it is, what, what, what you pay for them nowadays, a very good investment. Yeah, it is. But you got loads of choice out there for everything nowadays. Yes, yes. I think that's the end of this. My section. advice would be <laughs> is just to go to a guitar shop or a music store, wherever. Because buying them online can be risky business unless you know what you're getting. Mm. Go to a shop and try them out because that's the only way you're going to know what. And to pick an amp up as well. Make sure you can carry it. Yeah. I know people who can't. <laughs> I can imagine that, yeah. Just think, yeah, that's a really good sounding amp. It's fucking then... amazing, that. It's amazing. I can't fucking lift it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because the... yeah, that, that is, that is a, a massive thing for for us because you don't want to be taking three cars worth of gear to a gig when there's four of you. Cause... I mean, look at that gig we did at the pub, at the, the, the outdoor gig we did at, um, where is it, ages ago, at that pub. Um... Sea Lion. Yeah. yeah, and we had to go through the we have to go through the crowd, all the way to the fucking stage area, and we're carrying amplifiers. Yeah, we're doing three, yeah, two, three trips a piece. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah, it's just back breaking just getting to there. Then you got to play a fucking gig. Then, then you got to take it all back, take it all off, and everything like that. Whereas Make now, sure. I can, yeah, yeah, we can just go straight away with it, can't we? I, I reckon I could rock up with the head in one trip from the car. Done. Guitar, Guitar on, on back. back. Go. You see, there is pros and cons because that's a lot lighter than most pedal boards I see. Mm, definitely. Thank you. But that's just me bigging my gear up and trying to justify my investment. Yeah, so, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, modeler, yeah. all day long, purely versatility. Of, vest, yeah, versatility of it as well. Yeah, um, it's pretty big, isn't it? It's, mm. But it's each their own. Like I say, I'd, I think if I was to set up my stu little studio practice room thing at home, I'd be set with that. But and have that, and I keep that up here. But I do everything up here now, so that's that's me. For me, I don't need to just. For me, it's in my li in my little studio at home. Um, I've got a two twelve amp, which I plug my head rush through in. I plug my head rush direct into the computer, and I have a two twelve amp. I can just listen to it. Is that all I said. No, no. That old so, Fender thing. No, look, a two twelve Marshall valve state. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. two twelve Marshall valve state. I've got at home, and it. I just use that. You may ask out, the outside term. Why I don't know what gear Daniel's got because Daniel went for a phase about eighteen months ago, <laughs> of turning up to a weekly band practice with something different every time. He's had Black Star amps, valve state amps. Uh, what was that mode amp you had? Was that that one or not? Hey, is that the mode one? No, no. Oh, there we go. Then. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> and I came with that Fender twin thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you yeah. got rid of that. Yeah, that's shit. He's gone through some amps and 
you have to though. I'm just trying out, so I'm making sure for the same. The last six months I've brought a lot of gear, but that's purely because COVID. COVID, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I have to. I, I like swapping and changing gear, but now I've got the head rush. I, f- I don't feel like I have to swap and change gear. I feel like I can just go into the actual head rush, pick an amp out. Yeah, I think that's that's the bonus though, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's having everything there and. I suppose as long as you haven't heard what, because all the all these big multi effects processors companies do it, they'll they'll put things on the amps that relate to real. Well, they put things on the on the, system, on the units that sound like something else. So, mm. well, which they claim to sound some, like something else. So it's personal opinion on that. But like I said, like orange amps, you've got like tangerine amps, which yeah, is yeah. just it's clearly like. It's that saying that that's their version of it. Yeah, it all matters about the IR as well on these things. Downloading your own IRs, not using the inbuilt speakers and shit like that on these things, because usually they're just crap. Downloading your own IRs, they're they're better. Their, their impulse response is, which are taken from real speakers, that somebody's recorded, turned into digital, and then that's how they, they get the sound. Yeah, and they, they, they sound fucking great. It's so muted. Uh, yeah, and for a single one twelve. Yeah, one twelve, aren't they? Yeah, one twelve. And hey, if it absolutely came to it, they double up as a PA system as well. So it's a double investment, really. You know, yeah. and to have a flat response PA system is fucking great. Um, it is. But uh, I think that's just about it for today, Daniel. Sir, I think we've uh, uh, probably I say bored them with. Congratulations for making it to the end of the video. We've been running for thirty-seven minutes. Oh, fucking hell, so we're getting good at this now. <laughs> you know, we, we, struggled to find 20, we, we struggled to talk for 20 minutes on the first one. Yeah, whereas um, now it's, it's getting easy. It's getting easy. Yeah, we're getting there. Uh, less camera shy. Yeah. So uh, thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. Take it easy. <laughs>